Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss the graphical analysis of treatment of decompensated heart disease. In the previous few lectures, we have been discussing the graphical analysis of compensated heart failure and decompensated heart failure. Now today we are going to discuss the graphical analysis of the uh, decompensated heart failure. So to summarize, we discussed that in the compensated heart failure, in the compensated heart failure, what happens is that the cardiac output curve, the cardiac output curve. Now uh, let's uh, remind you that in this graphical analysis, we have the cardiac output, CO4 cardiac output and venous return on the Y axis. We have the cardiac output and, ven uh, and venous return on the Y axis and we have the right atrial pressure and mean systemic filling pressure on the X axis. Here we have the cardiac output curve and here we have the venous return curve. We discussed in the compensated heart disease uh, that that in compensated heart failure, this cardiac output curve, this cardiac output curve, it is basically above the 5 liter mark. This is the 5 liter mark which is basically a critical level. This is basically a critical level for fluid balance. So this 5 liter mark is basically the critical level above which compensation occurs and if the cardiac output is below this mark, then the heart failure is basically decompensated. So what happens is that in the cardiac, in the compensation, in the compensation, the cardiac output curve, the cardiac output curve, basically it goes above this line. It goes above this line, this line. So this line is crossed or this, this critical level, this critical level of cardiac output is basically achieved in the compensated cardiac failure. But in decompensated cardiac failure, this cardiac output curve, this cardiac output curve, this one, this black color curve, it remains below this line. It remains below this line, which is basically the 5 liter mark. So here we have the cardiac output and venous return. And here we have the 0 liters, here the 5 liters, here the 15 liters. Now, the decompensated cardiac failure, basically the cardiac output remains below the 5 liter mark. It remains below this 5 liter mark even with compensation. So it is called the decompensated cardiac failure. Now, how, how we are going to treat this? So here we have the treatment of the decompensated heart failure. Now, at this point, at this point E, at point E, at this point, we start treating. At this point, we start treating the heart with the help of digitalis. This is a drug which basically increases the pumping power of the heart. Now, what happens is when the treatment starts, when the treatment starts, the cardiac output increases from this point, this point E to this point G. Initially, we discussed that we had a point A here a point B, a point C, a point D and a point E. Initially, the heart was basically trying to compensate. There was com there were compensatory processes which were basically trying to increase the cardiac output. In the compensated heart failure, this cardiac output could increase above the 5 liter mark, but in decompensated, this cardiac output could only reach this point, but it could not go above this 5 liter mark. That is something which we have discussed in detail in the previous last uh, few lectures. Now, once the cardiac output has reached this point and the decompensatory process has started, the decompensation has started, now it is mandatory to start giving uh, different medicines. Uh, it is important to start treating the heart. Only then the cardiac output will increase and the decompensatory processes, the intrinsic processes will not be able to uh, bring the card heart from the uh, decompensation. So initially the digital digitalis is given. As soon as the digitalis is given, on the very first day, on the very first day, the cardiac output increases from this point, from this point E to this point G. Now the venous return curve remains the same. This green color venous return curve, it remains the same. The cardiac output curve, the cardiac output curve, which initially was which initially was crossing this venous return curve at point E is now crossing this venous return curve at point G. But the venous return is the same on the very first day of treatment. Now, digitalis may not be the only drug which will be given in the decompensation. There, the treatment of heart failure is not that simple and there are a lot of things. But we are just uh, uh, going through the graphical analysis of the treatment, how uh, it can be uh, depicted on a graph. So on the very first day of treatment, the cardiac output increases and it increases beyond this critical line, beyond this critical line, beyond this line, which is basically the five liter mark. So once the cardiac output has increased above this line, the, the heart failure is said to be compensated. Now the compensation occurs only when the cardiac output goes above the 5 liter mark because the normal cardiac output of the heart is around 5 liter. At this, at this uh, point, at 5 liter mark, at 5 liter mark, no fluid will be retained by the kidney and no fluid will be lost. So when it goes beyond uh, this point, the compensation occurs, but on the very first day, the venous return is the same. So this curve meet uh, the venous return curve at this new point. Now, several days later, once the treatment has been started, several days after starting the treatment, several days after starting the treatment, the cardiac output has increased. The cardiac output has increased to the critical point, to the 5 liter mark. But at the same time, the venous return, the venous return, the venous return curve has also come down to this point. So the venous return curve has also decreased to this point. Now, the new cardiac output curve, the new cardiac output curve, it is meeting the venous return curve at this new point. Now, this is the new point, which is basically the uh, compensated uh, point, And this is with the help of the treatment, especially the digitalis, which increases the pumping effectiveness of the heart due to which the heart is able to pump uh, 5 liter per minute. And then the, the kidneys uh, are perfused and the kidneys uh, do not retain fluid and diuresis starts. Diuresis. Diuresis start or urine formation starts. So 
Several days after starting the treatment, the cardiac output has increased to this critical mark. The cardiac output, the optimum cardiac output has been achieved and the venous return has also come down. When the venous return has come down, then the mean systemic filling pressure, this point, the mean systemic filling pressure, which is the pressure which is basically pumping or forcing the blood towards the heart, the point at which this venous return curve meets this x-axis, this point is basically the mean systemic filling pressure pressure mean systemic filling pressure the pressure which is basically forcing the blood towards the heart so this means systemic filling pressure also decreases it starts going towards its normal level and the right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure which initially was which initially was here which initially was here then it was here and it's finally come down to this point it has finally come down to this point now optimally in a normal heart the, the right atrial pressure should be around zero the right atrial pressure should be around zero the mean systemic filling pressure should be around seven the mean systemic filling pressure should be around seven the point at which this venous return curve touches the x-axis is the mean systemic filling pressure and this x-axis basically directly it at any point shows the right atrial pressure or the pressure in the right atrium so with the treatment with the treatment of the decompensated heart failure what happens is on the very first day on the very first day of treatment only the cardiac output increases from this e point to point g from point E to point G, only the cardiac output increases. This curve goes upward. But after several days or several days later, the venous return curves also shift downwards. The venous return curve shifts downwards and it also shifts leftward. It shifts towards the left side. And the right atrial pressure has also decreased. So this is the point at which uh, all the curves, the three curves, this venous return curve, uh, this cardiac output curve and the critical, the curve for the critical output for fluid balance, they all meet at this point. And we can say at this point that the heart failure, the decompensated heart failure has been optimally treated. Now, there will be no fluid retained by the kidneys and there will be no fluid loss and the, the, the patient or the any uh, person with that condition can now live a normal life. So that is basically the graphical analysis of the treatment of decompensated heart disease, which in a summary basically shows that on the first day of treatment, only the cardiac output increases, but several days later, the, the, the venous return also decreases, the right atrial pressure also starts coming towards its normal level, and the mean systemic filling pressure also starts coming towards the normal level. So that's all about the treatment of decompensated heart.